things that came out loud and clear was that we needed to provide more opportunities for, for, for people to develop into business leaders as well as community leaders. So our folks in our professional development committee, our desk and our chair, our Mark Whaley, Mark Higgins, uh, did a fantastic job of cutting right through that strategic plan and putting on some, some great value out opportunities. This is the first one we are so excited. As you all know, this is the place to build business relationships. The chamber is where many of us met and started doing business together. Um, but we're working on helping you become a new leader. And that's what this event is all about. So you're not only participating in this great leadership opportunity, it's really a banner event for the chamber. It's our first time doing something like this. We're excited to have Dan Geister leading us through that, providing uh, us with fantastic opportunities left and right. Anybody who the, the uh, emerging leaders meeting this week, fantastic meeting. So there's a big focus on leadership. And again, hats off to the Professional Development Committee. If you're on that committee, please raise your hand here. We have some sponsors here with, without which we would not have this program. And I'd like to uh, recognize that we have uh, Brian Hardy, <laughs> the incomparable Jim Roman. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. And a phenomenal sponsor of the Chesterfield Chamber in general, a Village Bank, Bill Foster's here. Bill, thank you so much. Thank you for having us out here. We also have Owen Printing, who uh, printed the workbooks and the surveys, did a very nice job. He started looking at that on the back, giving a little bit of uh, some eye time there. Uh, the Richmond Times Dispatch provided us with some valuable advertising, so buy paper, read it, it really is a good paper. I had an article there this week about someone I know very dearly. Um, and the Delta Tree, of course. The Delta Tree is provided us with a fantastic space. And from what I can tell, great microphone support. Thanks, Robert. Appreciate it. So at this point, I'd like to go ahead and invite Brian to come up from UPS to say a few words. Brian? Uh, I've been told I had a firm three minutes. And for those of you who know, I can be wordy. So somebody like, pull out there. <laughs> Kane in a minute. Um, and I'll reiterate, Doug, you can't select your phones and while you're doing it, make sure you turn them over. I don't want cheating on this question I got. So, right here, all right, I've got $100. All right, I want everybody to pretend for a minute it's 1907. And I want you to tell me what this $100 is worth today in 2014. That's 107 years for you CPAs and bankers, right? Plenty of you here, right? $100, 107 years ago, what's it worth today? All right, raise your hand so I can control it. Twenty-five hundred. Two hundred fifty thousand. Two hundred fifty thousand. You have a shirt. Thirty-five hundred. Black shirt. Nine dollars. Nine dollars. Nine dollars. Ten thousand. All right. Who said uh, twenty-five hundred? Yeah, it's twenty-four hundred. That was really impressive. All right, come on up. We got another box. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so I'm gonna add you know, I'm gonna ask David, David, you know, if I if I told you that that hundred bucks would be coming, twenty four hundred bucks is pretty cool, but it takes one hundred seven years. Or you can make it fifty five billion. What would you say? Right, exactly. Well, that's what our founder did one hundred seven years ago. He borrowed a hundred dollars. So for those that are trying to relate, that's $2,400 today. And he created a $55 billion company with 400,000 employees around the world. That's all it took, was $100. And he did that because he was a smart business person and he was a strong leader. And we read that in our legacy readings and our meetings all the time from the quotes that he said in 1949, 1932, the 1960s, um, up until the day that he died. And what he said was visionary and was leading and was very innovative within our industry, and it really helped create and boost the U.S. economy over the last hundred years. And um, and so I get asked all the time, you know, what, what do you do at UPS? You know, people don't think I work, <laughs> but I do. And uh, you know, I manage the sales force, 
You know, we've got, I got seven folks in Central Virginia that do what Jim did, uh, but we do it with our customers. Now, we spend maybe 78% with our current customers just trying to help them be smart business people and invest in smart business solutions that make uh, make improvements to the balance sheet, reduce that cash conversion cycle, one of the bankers and CPAs. Right? Um, and that's what we do. And that's what we love to do. And so when we were asked if we wanted to part of, uh, sponsor the Smarter Business Series, I couldn't think of a better investment of our dollars to put back in our community so that you guys could take something from this, take it back to your business, um, and take it back to your clients, and, uh, and do the same thing. So uh, I ask that you take something from today, participate vigorously, and uh, when you need some support, call UPS. Thanks a lot. One try. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you for being here. It's an honor to sponsor this event. Uh, a lot of people know me. My claim to fame is bringing BNI to Central Virginia to the Grove Valley. I was able to grow that from zero to 1,600 members in less than six years. What you might not know is for the last nine years I've been growing other people's companies. For example, I worked with an IT company locally that we went from $400,000 last year to $800,000 this year. Less than that year we did that. We're on track to, in the next couple of weeks to get them on track to get $1.2 Another company I work with uh, is four thousand dollars a month. They were doing it. We got done. We went from ten thousand dollars a month. And you're probably asking, how did I do that? Well, I have a great team of advisors that I bring into companies to help them grow. But what I find is there's eight best practices that you need to know to grow. Eight, and one of them is leadership. If you can bring the leadership out of you, your company will grow. One of the things I want you to get out of today is that leadership is not a title. It is not a position. It's an action and an example. I always say it's not what you know, it's what you implement that makes a difference. So today what we want you to get out of this is to take just one thing, you can go back to your company and be the true leader that you are and bring it out to bring the best out of other people. It's an honor to sponsor this event. We hope you enjoy yourself and have a great morning. Thank you. Thank you for putting this together. It's a thanks to Steve for making the, the trip and, and thanks for making it reasonably priced. I mean, uh, you can't get this kind of quality content for that price anywhere, inside your own organization or anywhere else. So I'm glad that we had a great turnout. Uh, we're sponsoring it because it's a great content. I got a look at the, when Howard brought it to one of our meetings and said this is what we think we can do. It was, it's, it's, uh, I've been through leadership programs for 30 years of my career, and this is as good a content as you'll find out there. I think the trick is each of us taking it home and turning it into something that we internalize and put to use inside our organization. So we, at Billick, we brought our top two levels of leadership to this. We've got 20 people here today because we're going through a lot. The business is constant change and constant evolution. Uh, keep up with the competition to get ahead of competition is certainly fine. So uh, that's why we're here. Um, the other reason is very true to our mission. Uh, we, it's not, you know, we, uh, serving our shareholders, but we're really also committed to making businesses and individuals and institutions in our communities thrive. And I don't think it, any company or any industry is better positioned in community banking because we touch every part of our society and our uh, economy out there. And it's not just through loans and deposits. We're out there trying to bring expertise to businesses like the others have talked about here that is helping you succeed in your business. Um, You'll find, as we have built our commercial banking team coming out of recession, you will find now, if you're a business person dealing with our bankers, we've got on the team a guy who has been a banker, but he spent 20 years running a business valuation firm for private clients. That's an expertise he brings to our team while he's serving your banking needs. We've got a guy who was a land developer for himself for profit and has come in to help us work with our real estate clients. We've got another guy who ran a home building company. I personally was a turnaround and strategic planning specialist for four years and, uh, before I came to the Village Bank. We've got a woman who uh, ran, was the executive director of the Women's Business Center funded by the SBA. She was also in a family office firm working with very wealthy individuals and business owners to, to help them plan for their future. So we've got expertise that goes way beyond that. We want to bring that to the benefit of our clients. So, um, my, my little uh, question for you, raise your hand if you have ever made a deposit using your mobile phone. Looks like about maybe 20% or something like that, 15%. You gotta try it. Um, 
dead serious. You will never go in a branch until you need to interact with somebody again. And our branch people, um, the uh, you know, they, they, they they're wrestling with that. Um, but if you got to try the technology that's out there. The beauty of dealing with Bill Bank or another community bank is you walk in when you need somebody in the branch, they know that. Or you call our customer care team, you're going to get one of six people. They're probably going to know your name. Thank you all for being here. We've got a great program for you. I'm going to introduce Steve. Steve Arneson founded uh, Arneson Leadership Consulting in 2007 to provide executive coaching, leadership development, and talent management solutions to leading organizations around the world. In his corporate life, Steve served as a regional vice president for Aon Consulting, VP of People Development at a division of PepsiCo, and as the head of learning, leadership development, and executive talent management at America Online, Time Warner Cable, and our very own Capital One. Steve has a passion for helping leaders reach their full potential. In each of the past five years, he has been named one of America's top 25 leadership consultants and one of the companies, one of the country's top 10 executive coaches uh, by Leadership Excellence Magazine. Dr. Arneson speaks regularly on the topic of leadership to corporate groups and conference audiences, writes a monthly leadership blog for the conference board, and is the author of two books, what Your Boss Really Wants From You, which was published in May of this year. And the book we're going to work with today, Bootstrap Leadership, 50 Ways to Break Out, Take Charge, and Move Up. It is an excellent book that I bought a couple of years ago. Steve is a client and friend of Impression Marketing, and you can learn about his business and his books at arnesonleadership.com. We are honored to have him here today. Please join me in welcoming Steve Arneson. I'd start up here so uh, you can all see me, but I like to work the room, so I'll be down on the floor in a moment. It's great to be back in Richmond. I came here every week for four years. Um, my family and I lived in Leesburg, Virginia for 14 years, and I came down to the campus at Capital One. Although I worked in McLean, I came every week, and uh, it's a beautiful drive. Although 95 is a little hairy, and um, I just love this town. I particularly love the craft beer. Why am I not here next week when the, you guys are sponsoring the craft beer festival? <laughs> I should be the speaker at that event. That's, that's what I really want. I'm going to Marcus to pick up my, my, my selection after this event. We should have done it now. We should have had you guys like all of this. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to put a lot of concepts and ideas and tips and techniques in front of you. And as some of our sponsors, by the way, thank you all for bringing me here. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna, as some of them have mentioned, if you take away one or two nuggets, from today. That, that'll be worth it. How do you become a better leader? I'm going to show you and tell you what the secret of that is right now up front, and I'm going to bury it at the very end in case some of you aren't here. So I want you to sit back, relax, talk with each other. You're going to do some writing for me. You're going to do some visiting with each other. You're going to do some visiting with me. I've got one technique that I learned from a woman recently in a big room like this. It's hard to get the room back once you start buzzing and talking to each other. So when you see me raise my hand, Anyone at your table that sees that, please raise your hand, and then when the hands go up, everybody knows that's time to quiet down. If I try to whistle or do it up here, it won't work. So I'll raise my hand when I want you to stop speaking, and help me out, raise yours, and then everybody will get the drill, and, and they'll stop talking.